Hey fam. So listen, I'm checking in. Hope y'all can hear me okay. Um, checking in with some news. It's not the easiest news to share, but I wanted my friends and family and colleagues to be aware of some changes that have happened on the health front with me. Um, for those who don't know my journey, I'm uh, 44 years old at this stage in my life, right? Um, I spent a good amount of time in Maryland and D.C., and then moved out to the Midwest in Kansas City to take care of my mom, which is where I've been for the last three and a half years. So toward the tail end of sort of COVID and the lockdown, um, I came out here and I've been here for quite a while now, unexpectedly. Um, in addition to taking care of my mom, I've also been looking out for myself and making sure that we're both on top of our appointments and everything that we need to do to maintain our health, et cetera, and wellness. So that's never been lost on me and my family to make sure that we check ourselves out and uh, go to the doctors if things don't feel right and don't seem right. Um, and that's what happened to me recently. So you probably already know from the title that um, just a few weeks ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and it is an aggressive type uh, for my age and for the markers that it has, but the medical name for it is ductal carcinoma or invasive ductal carcinoma, which in short means that it's cancer that starts in the milk ducts for most women. Um, and in my case, because I have extremely dense breast tissue, which runs in my family on my mom's side, um, it didn't necessarily show up right away, right? So mm -hmm. What prompted me to go in to get uh, an exam was feeling a lump, a very noticeable lump. And that literally just happened like two and a half weeks ago. I happened to be doing a breast self-exam, you know, sitting down watching TV. And I was like, let me check the girls out and felt something that felt a little odd. And when I felt it again, a few days later, I went into my doctor and really grateful for the health system here because they fast tracked me through an office visit and then a follow-up mammogram and ultimately a biopsy. Um, and that biopsy came back fairly quickly with a response that it was cancer. What that means right now, I'm still figuring out in terms of, um, how serious it is in the sense that how large its exact location. And I've been telling a lot of people that it's still very much a guessing game until they actually do some sort of surgery and go in to see what's happening. But I have been put through quite a bit of tests. I've had more pokes and prods and exams, uh, to really figure out exactly um, how invasive it is and what stage I am, right? Because I'm sure you've heard the term or phraseology stage like one, two, three, or four with, with different types of cancer. And that's still being determined right now, right? What I do know is that I have a high grade type cancer, which means that it is more likely to grow fast and potentially spread, right? I have a grade three, which is on the highest end of the spectrum for um, the type of growth factors, et cetera, and how quickly it advances. And it has a particular marker called a HER marker. And that marker is specific to the type of, I guess, characteristics of the cancer, but also the treatments that they give. Um, it's also not an uncommon type of cancer for women my age. So again, I'm 44 and I share that for full transparency. I have not had children. Um, I have a history of breast cancer on my mother's side, which I'm also going through genetic testing for um, because there have been multiple occurrences of breast cancer, the same type on my mother's side. And I am now just doing everything I can for them to fully understand the cancer that I have and how to treat it, right? Um, what they do know right now is that it is about a stage two, possibly a stage three. And I say that because again, all the tests haven't fully come back yet, right? Um, I had an MRI recently and I'm awaiting the results of that, like literally like a few days ago. So as soon as I know more, I'll share more. But for right now, it's about a stage two or three, which is treatable, right? And the cancer that I have right now is highly treatable. That's the other good thing. I want my people to know that this is going to be a journey, but that it is one that I am fully intending to come out the other side of and join the amazing community of survivors and particularly my own family. Um, and then everyone out there, I am at once overwhelmed with information, but also encouraged by the people who have shared the women and men alike who have shared their stories, who have sent me positive and encouraging messages, um, 
And then just the wealth of information that's available on like YouTube and blogs for folks who share their experience at every turn, because you do have questions and there are things you don't want to ask, right? Like, what's it going to be like when my hair falls out from chemo and everything? So with that said, um, the type of cancer that I have does require immediate treatment, right? I can't delay on that. So what I'm doing right now is getting all my ducks in a row and I'm going to be treated at the University of Kansas Um medical center it's the cancer center but then there's also the women's cancer center which is it is a comprehensive cancer center it's um a part of a national affiliate and they're like the best in the region right now i'm seeking a second opinion as well at johns hopkins in baltimore because that's my home base and or it has been for the last decade almost and they also have one of the top five cancer treatment centers in the country so I'm doing everything I need to do in that regard, um, but I am preparing for a bit of a fight, right? Like chemotherapy is is the best course of treatment right now. And there is a particular word for it, and I think it's called adjuvant or adjuvant. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but essentially it means preoperative chemo. So in this case, I am going to get about 12 weeks worth of chemotherapy that's gonna treat the HER2 type cancer and then the cancer or site itself. Um, and then I'm going to go into or explore working with my surgical oncologist um, or breast surgeon, I should say, to talk about um, what that looks like. If it's changed or, or reduced in size, if I'm responding to chemo, it may be a less invasive surgery. And what that is, is that it's a really relatively new development in the sense that they're not rushing me in to do any exploratory, you know, cutting. Um, they're not just going to remove the mass. They're going to try to shrink it and they're going to try to minimize, you know, its spread and its impact and then learn it as well before they go in and actually decide a surgical option. So it may be a much less invasive procedure by the time I get to surgery. And by that, I mean, instead of having to have what many of, you know, are familiar with in the field is a mastectomy or the removal of my entire breast, I could potentially end up having the equivalent of a partial removal or a lumpectomy, you know, preserving certain aspects of me. Because for anyone who've gone, who's gone through this process, one of the things that constantly, I think, goes through our minds is, you know, our bodies and how this is going to change us, you know? Um, yeah. I, I'm going to pause there because this is a lot. And... Um, I'm confronted with a lot. Um, you honestly sometimes, or I sometimes don't think it can happen to me, you know, for the longest time I've been young and healthy. I've never had a major illness and I've been blessed in that regard. You know, this is not a diss to anybody who has, it's just more of a, I've never had to confront these feelings. And a lot of it is, you know, emotional. And in addition to the actual logistics and getting the treatment and scheduling the appointments, it's, it's a ride, a roller coaster ride, because I go from one day of feeling okay, and the next day I just want to crawl in bed and cover myself over with a blanket and not come out. Um, but this is what I wanted to say in terms of my community, and this is why I wanted to share this this video. My community has been overwhelmingly supportive, overwhelmingly even from the smallest to the biggest ways. So I have to really give a shout out to everyone that I rock with right now that I'm close to, particularly my friend Gadir, who has shown up for me as a sister, as a confidant, as a caretaker, as a, I call her my care doula right now because she really does look out for me in every way. And without question was like, what do you need? I'm here, we're here. So thank you, um, Gadir and my extended family for helping with mom and my colleagues for telling me not to worry about the work, to just take care of me. Um, there's a lot going on um, and I'll share that in another post in terms of where I am in terms of my work and educational journey. For now, I just wanted to get the word out, right? Because this is important. Um, there's a bit of a PSA on the tail end of this, which is to say, if you are close in age to me. If you know of any history of cancer in your family, I'm encouraging you, I can't encourage you enough to get regular screenings and mammograms. If you have dense breast tissue, get regular screenings and mammograms and do it before the time frame that they typically require you to do it, especially if you feel things that are off, right? 
um, encourage your doctor to do a genetic history. There is a Gale test that you can do online that will tell you generally, not specifically, but generally, if you have certain indicators, right? Like the first, uh, your onset of your menstrual cycle, uh, how many other people in your family may have had cancer, um, other things like that. It can tell you percentage wise, how likely it is that you may have cancer in your family. Um, do that, do that, and then push for really clear and close screenings. And by that, I mean, my mammogram didn't initially catch my 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 tumor, essentially. Um, I had a mammogram in July of last year that was essentially clear. They sent me home right away. They give you your, your results on site if nothing looks off. And that was just a screening. And then uh, my doctor found a, a cyst, which is a fluid-filled benign sort of sac in your, your breast. And that's what prompted me to get my first mammogram two years ago. I wasn't scheduled to start getting mammograms until 45. So that's something that I really want to make people aware of. I would not essentially have even been checking for this unless I had found the lump, right? Until another year from now, right? But because I was now in the habit of getting these screenings, given my family history and the fact that I have dense tissue and the, the lump, uh, the cyst, that started me on that track. So I had had essentially, this was my second diagnostic or screening mammogram, right? Just to see if there was anything off and different. And that showed up as clear when I found the lump, which is probably six to eight months later, right? That I went in for another mammogram and this time it was done with an ultrasound combined, right? And it was a 3D mammogram. That's the other thing. 3D mammograms just allow for a better picture of your breast tissue and your breasts at large. And so I have had the 3D mammograms and then this time I got an ultrasound because of the site. The mammogram also didn't show significant changes. Again, it was the ultrasound. It was the ultrasound in addition to the physical exam that um, I had and my doctor had um, before they sent me for the, the diagnostic mammogram. And those were different kinds of procedures because they were no longer just general screenings. These were diagnostic. They were like, we know something is there. And so we're going to look real close and we use the tools that we have, in this case, mammogram and ultrasound to find it. And it was the uh, biopsy, obviously, that confirmed the presence of cancer. So I encourage you all be vigilant. Don't think it can't happen. You know, um, you know, don't stress yourself out, but do the checks. It's relatively easy. Mammograms are not painful like they used to be in the past. Um, the technology has come a long way. And then there are also a lot of free resources, especially if cost is a factor and insurance is a barrier. So don't think that you can't stay on top of your screenings. Uh, don't be afraid to, because the one thing I know about this process is the sooner they catch it, the better. And in my case, I, mine started off in the, the milk ducts and had spread quite a little bit, right? So uh, we're still figuring out the extent of it. And right now I'm going in again for more tests, but I pray that I come off the other side of this healthy and whole. Um, I want to share my journey with you. I want it to you to hear it from me. I do sincerely apologize if, if folks who didn't know are hearing about this for the first time via this video message, um, but know that it's not intentional. It's not personal. I've been trying my best to have individual calls and one-on-one, -on -one, you know, exchanges, and that can be a bit tiring. So I've been thinking through what's the best way to do this. And I thought a quick video would, 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 you know, allow me to just get the word out. You can reach out to me at any time, right? So I'm going to put my email on there. I will do my best to get back to you. At the same time, know that um, if you don't hear from me, please don't hold it against me. I'm just figuring things out. Um, I do have a lot to negotiate and figure out before I start treatment. It is about it's close to the end of May, March now. I am scheduled to begin treatment by the second week of April. And that is the preoperative chemotherapy. And I expect and anticipate going through quite a lot of changes from there. So again, if you don't hear from me, if I look significantly different the next time you see me, I'm sparting a big old ball head. Uh, just, you know, give me some love, dap me up from a distance um, and check in on me here and elsewhere. Um, I'm going to try my best to set up a care page soon, sooner rather than later, so that you can check in. And essentially it's a blog site that allows me to share information. Um, 
And I'm also going to consider uh, anyone who wants to support me. The care page has a wonderful, wonderful links to resources. So if you're able to support me or others, I will have lists of organizations, particularly, for example, for Black women who are going through cancer diagnoses and treatments and then recovery. Um, if you want to send me a note, a card, uh, a love offering in the form of funds, that would be most appreciated, right? Um, it is not required, but it's definitely, it definitely would be put to good use, especially now as I think through periods of not being employed and what that looks like. Um, so yeah, it will be your choice, but it'll all be received with love. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'm trying to put out a brave face right now because this was not easy to share, but I'm glad that I got through it. And I thank you if you got to this point in the video and you're still listening. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, we don't get through this journey called life alone. And I sincerely hope that I have a long and rich life and I know that I will and that you're by my side. All right. Love you. Peace out. I'll talk to you soon.